everyone welcome to gem chem now this is periodic properties part 6 video and here we will deal with slater's rule to calculate the screening constant of different orbitals and to determine the effective nuclear charge now before starting if you have not watched the previous videos on periodic properties you can watch it i will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video so let us start today's video now first we have to know this term that is Z star is the effective nuclear charge and it is given by the nuclear charge minus the screening or shielding constant. Now the rules of the slaters are given as follows that is the electronic configuration of elements should be written in the following order or grouping that is 1s in one group then 2s and 2p same for 3s and 3p. 4s and 4p when d orbitals and f orbitals comes into play they takes place a different group so now we will see for suppose cobalt okay let's start with cobalt cobalt has 27 right so its configuration is argon 4s 2 3d 7 or it can be written as argon 3d 7 4s 2 right now when we start to group what we will get 1s 2 2s 2p 8 3s 3p 8 3d 7 4s 4p 2 and then the other groups left over it goes on right because here we have already seen that this portion is being occupied that is 4s 4p is occupied and 3d is occupied so we leave here okay it can continue now from this after constructing this grouping we will see how to calculate the screening constant suppose if we consider for 3p this orbital screening constant in cobalt then how can we calculate we will see that but before that we have to see the rules right for all electrons to the right of the group under consideration will contribute 0 to the value of s that is the groups present after these will contribute 0 okay after the 3p and the next one is all other electrons in the ns np group will contribute 0 0.35 each to the value of s that is the electrons present here that is present here that is n that is the one with 3s 3p and 3d will contribute to be as the 0.35 okay ns and np group right and all electrons in the n minus 1th shell will contribute 0.85 each to the value of s that is nth minus 1 is this one so it will contribute as 0.85 and all electrons that is all electrons in the n minus 2 and lower will shield completely and contribution is 1 that is here for 1 is the contribution is 1 right now another sub rule if electrons under consideration is in n d or n f level then the rules 1 and 2 will be the same that is this one and the previous grouping one but other rules are modified all the other electrons in the nd or nf level will contribute 0.35 h and all the electrons in the left of the nd or nf will contribute 1 as we know that the d and f orbitals shield poorly now if we consider for the cobalt we have already grouped it now let's write it again for cobalt the grouping was like this right 1s2 2s 2p8 3s 3p8 3d7 4s 4p2 and thus it continues we will ignore the other terms which we don't need and the screening constant comes to be for this one see for the this one the contribution will be 
in it. So it will be 1 into 0.35, right? Okay, this is the nth one. And for this part, the value will be n minus 1, so 15 into 0.85 plus this one, this will be n, so 1 into 10, right? So, this will be all total the screening coefficient or screening constant for cobalt itself, okay? And if we consider for 3D orbitals, that is for this, if we consider, then the value will come to be as for this, that is for 6 electrons present here, that is present here, that is 6 electrons which are present here will be considered as 6 into 0.35 plus the 18 electrons present here is 18 into 1.00. So, this is the screening for this orbital that is 3d, 1 electron of the 3d. What is the screening coefficient of 1 electron of the 3d? And previously we have seen for the whole orbital that is for 3p orbital, right? Now we will see that if electron under consideration is in 1s orbital, then the other electron in 1s orbital will contribute 0 0.30 and not 0.35. This is important. Now, this is one question. Using the Slater's rule, explain why during the ionization, the electrons are preferably lost from 4s rather than 3d. Okay. Now, first we start with an example that is nickel. Okay. Nickel 28. Now, we write the configuration argon. 3D8, 4S2. Now, we will see S for a 4S electron. Now, we start grouping, right? First work is to start grouping. So, we will start grouping. 1S2, 2S, 2P8, 3S, 3P8, 3d8 and 4s 4p2 okay now first we will do for contribution of 4s okay contribution of 4s electron that is for this one okay now see here since we are considering for a 4s electron there is two electron so one of the electron is constant and another electron will be taken so, 1 into 0.35. Now, for n minus 1 it. Okay. So, this is n minus 1 it. n minus 1 it. So, what will be the value? How many electrons? 8 plus 8 gives us 16 electron. So, here the contribution will be 16 into 0.85. Right? And the last one is for n and lower. Right? So, this is the total. So, 10 into 1, right. So, what is the total of S? S comes to be as 23.95 and the effective nuclear charge comes to be as 28 minus 23.95 which comes to be as 4.05, okay. Now, we have obtained the S for 4S electron as well as the effective nuclear charge for the 4s electron when it is being removed. Now we see for the contribution of s that is s term that is previously we have seen the s for the 4s electron and now we will see s for the 3d electron. So s for 3 d electron remember this is a d electron so there will be a difference in the rule right so first we do the grouping as previously done 1s 2 2s 2p 8 
थ्री एस थ्री पी एट थ्री डी एट फोर एस फोर पी टू ओके नाउ वी विल सी द कंट्रीब्यूशन फॉर थ्री डी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर लेफ्ट एट माइनस वन देर इज सेवन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स लेफ्ट सो सेवन इंटू पॉइंट थ्री फाइव एंड योर टोटल इज टेकन सो हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एट प्लस एट सिक्सटीन सेवनटीन एटीन सो एटीन इंटू वन सो द स्क्रीनिंग कोफिशेंट और स्क्रीनिंग कॉन्स्टेंट कम्स टू बी एस ट्वेंटी पॉइंट फोर फाइव एंड सो द इफेक्टिव चार्ज कम्स टू बी एस जेड माइनस एस विच कम्स टू बी एस नियर अबाउट सेवन पॉइंट फाइव फाइव सो फ्रॉम ह्योर सी ह्योर द वैल्यू फॉर द इफेक्टिव चार्ज इज लेस एंड फॉर ह्योर द इफेक्टिव चार्ज वैल्यू इज मोर सो सिंस द इफेक्टिव न्यूक्लियर चार्ज एक्सपीरियंस बाई फोर एस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इज लेसर दैन दैट ऑफ द थ्री डी द रिमूवल ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन फ्रॉम फोर एस विल बी मोर फेवर्ड दैन थ्री डी सो आफ्टर डूइंग द कैलकुलेशन यू हैव टू टेल दिस वन सो दिस वॉज द आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन पर्टिकुलरली कैन कम इन डिफरेंट वे दैट इज अ क्वेश्चन कैन बी आक्स लाइक ड्यूरिंग द फीलिंग अप ऑफ एटोमिक ऑर्बाइटल्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एट फर्स्ट एंटर द फोरेस्ट एंड देन द थ्री डी बट ड्यूरिंग आयनाइजेशन द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर लॉस्ट फ्रॉम फोरेस्ट रादर दैन थ्री डी सो फ्रॉम देर यू हैव टू फर्स्ट एक्सप्लेन यूजिंग ऑफ बो प्रिंसिपल एंड देन मोर डिटेल्स कैन बी रिक्वायर्ड डिपेंडिंग ऑन द मार्क्स सो दिस क्वेश्चन विल बी डिस्कस्ड इन सम अदर वीडियो नाउ वी विल सी अनदर क्वेश्चन दैट इज यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट the energy associated with 5s orbitals of rubidium using slater's rule so this is for you to solve i will give the hint only right now using slater's rule so first work is to obtain the value of z star so after obtaining the value of z star the energy can be easily obtained that is minus 13.58 z star square by n square electron volt this particular formula is being specially derived in atomic structure part 1 and 2 video you can watch it for the reference i will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video so this is how it can be solved first calculate the rubidium screening constant and then get the z star and then put the value here and n square here will be certainly Five, right? Because five is orbital is being asked to consider. So hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment.